In the vast wheat fields of Montana, where the horizon seems to stretch forever, machines have always needed to match the scale of the land. But in 1977, one tractor would redefine what was possible in agricultural engineering. Standing 14 feet tall, stretching 27 feet long, and weighing over 100,000 pounds when fueled, the Big Bud 747 would claim the title of the world's largest farm tractor, a record it has held for nearly five decades. This is the story of how a small manufacturing company in Havre, Montana, built a machine that would become a legend. There wouldn't be any Big Bud 747 without the company that created it and the men who made it possible. In the early 1960s, Havre, Montana, was home to a thriving Wagner tractor dealership owned by a man named Willie Hensler. Wagner was a pioneer in agricultural equipment, having developed some of the first articulated four-wheel drive tractors designed for the massive fields of the American plains. These tractors, which bent in the middle to turn, were essential for working the enormous wheat farms of Montana and the Canadian prairies. Business was good for Hensler until 1968, when Wagner made a fateful decision. The company signed a contract with John Deere to build 100 rebadged tractors. The deal seemed like a lifeline for the struggling Wagner company, but there was a catch buried in the fine print. Wagner could not build their two most popular models, the WA-14 and WA-17, or launch any competing tractors for five years after completing the Deere contract. This effectively killed Hensler's dealership overnight. His supply of new tractors was cut off and there was nothing he could do about it. The Deere branded Wagners sold poorly and Wagner itself soon faded into history. But Hensler was not a man who gave up easily. Working alongside him at the dealership was his service manager, a skilled mechanic known to everyone as Big Bud Nelson. Nelson had built a reputation for repowering Wagner tractors with bigger engines, making them more capable than anything that had rolled off a factory floor. In 1969, Hensler and Nelson made a decision that would change agricultural history. If they couldn't sell Wagner tractors anymore, they would build their own. They formed Northern Manufacturing Company, and they named their new line of tractors after the man most responsible for building them, Big Bud. The first Big Bud tractor was called the HN250, the H standing for Hensler, the N for Nelson, and 250 representing the engine horsepower. It was essentially a super-powered Wagner, built with many familiar parts but featuring a new powertrain. At its heart sat an 855 cubic inch Cummins diesel engine mated to a 12-speed Fuller transmission. Rated at 250 horsepower and weighing 34,000 pounds, the HN250 was a serious machine. More importantly, it was built the way a mechanic builds things, designed to be serviced and repaired in the field. Nelson's mechanical genius showed in every aspect of the design. He put the radiator, engine and transmission on a skid system so components could slide out easily for maintenance. He made the cab fold back hydraulically like a cab over truck, giving mechanics unrestricted access to the drivetrain. These were innovations that no major manufacturer was offering at the time. The first two Big Bud tractors, designated the 250 series, were purchased in 1968 by Leonard Semenza of Semenza Farms, located between Fort Benton and Chester, Montana. Semenza operated a 35,000-acre farm in Montana's Golden Triangle, one of the most productive wheat-growing regions in the country. The tractors proved themselves on this demanding ground and word began to spread. By the mid-1970s, Hensler and Nelson were ready to slow down. They had built around 20 tractors and established a solid reputation, but they were getting older. They needed someone with the energy and ambition to take the company further. That person was Ron Harmon, a successful local businessman who had grown up around tractors. Harmon had spent his high school years at his father's truck stop next door to a tractor dealership, learning everything he could about heavy equipment. In 1974, he purchased Northern Manufacturing Company from Hensler and Nelson. Harmon immediately began restructuring the operation. He knew that to succeed, Big Bud needed to sell beyond Montana. 
He took one of the 250 tractors to the Tulare Farm Show in California, trying to gauge the national market for high horsepower tractors. He got his answer. Under Harman's leadership, the company introduced new models with even more power. The KT line featured the massive 450 horsepower Cummins KTA 1150 engine. In 1976, Harman built a new 30,000 square foot manufacturing facility keeping the old Wagner dealership building for sales and repairs. A year later, he introduced the Series 2 models with larger cabs and numerous improvements. Then came the phone call that would create the world's largest farm tractor. Elmer and Melvin Rossi were cotton farmers in California's San Joaquin Valley. Their operation near Bakersfield covered approximately 20,000 acres of some of the most productive and most demanding farmland in America. Cotton farming in California requires a process called deep ripping. Over time, heavy equipment compacts the soil, creating hard layers called hard pans that prevent roots from penetrating and water from draining properly. Deep ripping uses powerful implements to break up this compacted soil to depths of 20 inches or more. It is brutally hard work that demands tremendous pulling power. The Rossi brothers had been using multiple Caterpillar D9 bulldozers to deep rip their fields. It was slow, expensive, and inefficient. They could only rip one third of their acreage each year. They approached Ron Harmon with a simple request. Build them a tractor powerful enough to do the work of three D9s. They wanted to rip all their ground every year instead of every three years. And according to Harmon, they made one thing perfectly clear. They didn't care what it cost. They wanted the largest tractor in the world. Harmon accepted the challenge. The design work fell to engineer Wilbur Hensler, who planned a machine unlike anything ever built for agriculture. The specifications were staggering. At the heart of the new tractor would be a Detroit diesel 16V92T engine, a 16-cylinder, two-stroke diesel displacing 1,472 cubic inches, or 24.1 liters. The engine featured both turbochargers and superchargers, and it was initially rated at 760 horsepower. This was the same type of engine used in mining equipment and large marine vessels. The tractor needed tires capable of supporting its immense weight while providing traction in soft soil. United Tire Company of Canada manufactured custom tires standing 8 feet in diameter, mounted in dual configuration on both axles. The frame was built from heavy steel with an articulated center hinge for steering, essential for maneuvering a machine of this size. The wheelbase stretched over 16 feet and the overall length reached 27 feet, extending to 28 feet 6 inches with the drawbar. A 1,000-gallon fuel tank was integrated into the design, along with a 150-gallon hydraulic reservoir. When empty, the tractor weighed 95,000 pounds. With a full tank and ballast added, it could tip the scales at 135,000 pounds, nearly 68 tons. The cab was surprisingly comfortable for the era, featuring air conditioning, a heater, windshield wipers, a radio, and an 8-track stereo system. There was even a buddy seat for passengers. After all, when you're covering ground at over an acre per minute, you might want company. The machine was named the 747 after the Boeing 747 Jumbo Jet, which had entered service in 1970 as the largest passenger aircraft in the world. It seemed fitting. Both machines represented the pinnacle of engineering ambition in their respective fields. The project cost approximately $300,000 equivalent to roughly $1.5 million today. Ron Harmon and his team at Northern Manufacturing completed construction in 1977. Big Bud 747 was delivered to the Rossi brothers in California, where it went straight to work. Pulling wide, deep ripping implements, the tractor could cover 1.3 acres per minute at speeds up to eight miles per hour. It accomplished exactly what the Rossies had demanded, replacing their fleet of bulldozers with a single, more efficient machine. The brothers operated the 747 for 11 years before selling it to Willowbrook Farms in Indialantic, Florida. 
The Florida operation also used the massive tractor for deep ripping, helping transform ranch land into productive farmland. Meanwhile, back in Montana, the Big Bud Company continued producing tractors through the mid-1980s. Approximately 550 Big Bud tractors were manufactured in total, ranging from 300 to over 700 horsepower. The company faced serious difficulties in the 1980s when a transmission supplier failed to deliver parts for pre-sold tractors, nearly bankrupting the operation. The Meisner brothers purchased the company in 1985 and production slowed through the late 1980s as the farming recession took hold. The last Big Bud rolled off the line in 1992, but the 747 endured. In 1997, after a period of disuse in Florida, the Big Bud found its way back to Montana. Robert and Randy Williams, farmers from Big Sandy, just 60 miles from where the tractor was originally built, purchased the machine and brought it to their farm in Chouteau County. The Williams brothers put the 747 back to work, using it to pull an 80-foot cultivator across their fields. They also upgraded the engine, first to 900 horsepower, then to 960, and eventually to its current rating of 1100 horsepower, accomplished by installing higher flow fuel injectors. A crisis emerged in 2000 when United Tire Company of Canada, the manufacturer of the original 8-foot tires, went bankrupt. Without replacement tires available, the 747's future as a working machine was uncertain. The tractor was displayed at agricultural museums in Iowa, including the Heartland Museum in Clarion, which built a special shed called the Big Red Shed to house it. But the Williams brothers never gave up hope of returning the machine to active duty. In July 2020, a solution arrived. The original pieces of rubber were replaced with Goodyear tires, slightly under seven feet tall, mounted on new rims provided by the Williams brothers. In September 2020, the Big Bud 747 returned to Montana and went back to work pulling an 80-foot Frigstad chisel plow. Today, the Big Bud 747 remains the largest farm tractor ever built. While modern manufacturers like John Deere, Case and Fent now produce standard tractors exceeding 700 horsepower, none approach the 747's combination of size, weight and power. Even the latest John Deere tractors with over 800 horse weigh less than half what the Big Bud weighs when fully ballasted. In 2023, the Big Bud brand itself experienced a revival. Big equipment company, Ron Harman's successor company in Havre, partnered with Rome Plow Company to begin producing new Big Bud tractors. These new machines offer between 640 and 950 horsepower, continuing the tradition of high-power, farmer-serviceable tractors that can be repaired with over-the-counter parts available anywhere in the world. The Big Bud 7. 47 represents something rare in modern manufacturing. A custom-built machine designed for a specific purpose, created by skilled craftsmen who understood that farmers need equipment they can maintain themselves. It was born from necessity when a tractor dealership lost its supplier, refined through years of experience building heavy equipment and scaled to meet an extraordinary challenge. Nearly 50 years after it rolled out of the Northern Manufacturing Company building in Havre, Montana, the world's largest farm tractor is still doing what it was built to do, working the land.